community meeting of 2022. My name is Tanja Connerly, and I have the honor of being one of the board members for our Open, open Education Conference. To get us started, if you can please go to www.menti.com, and Haley's going to put the additional information in the chat and enter the code 79559014. Also, while you're observing the chat, if you can please tell us exactly who you are and where are you joining us from? And in a word or two, what is gonna really excite you about the Open Ed 22 conference? While you're utilizing the chat to introduce yourselves, I would also like our board members to introduce themselves at this time since this is only our second community meeting. So board members, if you can start off by introducing yourself, thank you. Sure, I'll go. Um, my name is Susan Payne. I am an education specialist at the Oregon Department of Education, and I'm on our Oregon Open Learning team. Director for Open. I'm Stephanie Buck. I'm the director for Open Educational Resources at Oregon State University, and I'm on the board. And my name is Haley Babb. Um, I'm part of the Spark team, who is uh, supporting. Uh, the Open Education Conference through uh, this next transitional period. So, yes. Am I the only one left to introduce her? I, uh, so I'm Atul Roy, I teach at Montgomery College and I got this, uh, I mean, I, I'm very excited about open education because, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I visited a, an open education university in India a long, long time ago that was established again, like about uh, over 30 years ago. So anyways, so with this open education idea, it's really exciting for me and I don't know much about it, but I'm glad to join you. And uh, I hope I'm not in wrong place, but because I'm not a board member, I'm not, I don't have any official title. I'm just uh, an instructor, uh, you know, just teaching full time for like 45 plus years. So, or 47, I keep forgetting. All right, so so here I am. Okay. Well, we thank you very much. And we don't want you to say you're just, a, you're not a board member. We are so happy to have you in our community. So thank you very much. Um, our agenda for today is that we're gonna start off by discussing and giving you an update on our operational uh, part of the conference. And then we will have a call for proposal update we will also discuss with you our theme, Rise to Action, which we're very excited about. And we're looking forward to your contributions in reference to adding to that. Um, and also we will have a conversation about discussion questions, and then we'll have a wrap up. So at this time, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, uh, Stephanie. Thanks, Tanja. So quick operations update. Um, so this is going to be our first year of community-led governance, and obviously, as you know, we have board of governors now, or board of directors, I guess I should say, um, who are voted uh, for, for on by the community. Um, we've been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work to establish our government pro governance processes, and I think hopefully by next week you should hear maybe some more about that and what kind of structure we're going to put into place. Once that is in place, committee recruitment will start. Uh, so we haven't quite gotten yet to the committees, um, but keep, keep, the, keep those in mind because we know that many of you are interested in joining us and volunteering and being part of the proposal. So um, community questions. Yeah, so last time we had a community meeting, our first one, we had a couple of questions that we just wanted to respond to. One was, why did we choose to stay virtual? And there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, primarily just getting in the venue at this short time would have been very difficult. And there's a lot of legal and fiscal implications for having an on-site um, conference. So we decided with all the other stuff that's going on, we're gonna stay virtual this year. We also like the fact that more people were joining us in, at the virtual conference. So it's a little bit more accessible. What will change this year? Hopefully not a whole lot. Um, we hope that it's gonna be the same kind of experience that you've had in the past. It's just that the, 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 the governance of the 
of the of the conference has been changed for to a board of directors and spark but we don't anticipate doing any large changes to the conference this year and then how do i get involved um, there'll be more information about that but yes we will have um information about how you can get involved in the conference as a volunteer or uh, get onto a committee. And let's see what else. So oh, call for proposals is coming soon. Watch for an announcement the week of April 18th. Uh, we should be um, sending out something at that point. And then if you are not already signed up to the mailing list, please go ahead and sign up to the mailing list. And that way you'll get notified of the call for proposals. In our theme announcement, very exciting, um, is Rise to Action. And this was suggested by last year's steering committee, a special nod to Regina Gong, who put a lot of work into this theme. The 2020 theme was reimagined open education or reimagining open education. And the 2021 theme was open for all. So Rise to Action is a continuation of the work done over the past two years and serves as a call to action for the open education community. And please stay tuned for a full announcement in the coming days. And now I will turn it over to, is Rachel here? I don't think so, Stephanie. So um, we're gonna continue to talk about the, um, as, as Stephanie said, we're gonna have a discussion part. And Haley, do you want me to do the topics or would you? Sure, um, I am happy to start us out with the topics um, and then I'll hand it over to some of my colleagues to sort of share in the discussion. So I know there's a there's an overwhelming slide in front of you that I'll, uh, I'll explain in just a moment here. Um, we wanted to take today uh, as an opportunity to chat a little bit to you about the call for proposals specifically. Um, so I know that uh, many of you will have attended the conference in the past, um, but there also may be um, some of you who are new to the community. That's okay. Uh, we would love your feedback, sort of regardless of the amount of familiarity that you have with the Open Education Conference. So please, um, you know, feel free to participate in the discussion that we're about to start now. So we would just ask that um, you make sure that you are logged into menti.com and that your responses you're following through um, on the menti app. That way we can track um, this information and, and have it um, sort of logged to go through as we make decisions. So if you wanna make sure that your responses are noted, Menti is the best way to do that. Uh, okay, so now that my spiel's done, I'll get into the questions. Um, so what you're looking at here, these are the topics that we used last year um, at Open Ed 2021. So there were 10 topics um, in total. Uh, and, and what the topics were, were essentially ways of categorizing um, the session so that, you know, if you were interested in a particular topic, you'd easily be able to see um, which sessions of the conference relate to this. Um, so 10 topics um, is a lot. And, and we know that um, there was a little bit of feedback just about maybe perhaps feeling overwhelmed by some of these. So we are going to make some adjustments um, moving forward. Uh, and we would love to hear what all of you think about that. So uh, before we get into that, we're curious to know of the 10 topics that you saw last year, um, they're all sort of listed in no particular order here. Um, which of them do you think brought the most value and, and you'd really like to see um, continuing into the conference? They could be under a different name, but maybe think about this as sort of like a um, uh, not directly moving the topics from conference to conference, but just sort of a general idea. Which of these really stood out to you? Which would you like to see um, at future conferences? Um, so I'll give it a moment just for folks to input their answers. I know that this is, it's a hard decision. Um, a lot of these seem so crucial and, and so important. So, you know, we certainly won't be losing um, any of these topics. We may just sort of um, bundle some of them together and um, reduce that down just for readability. Awesome. Okay, so I see some results coming in. Great. Okay. Uh, so a lot of emphasis on teaching and learning, designing for inclusion and accessibility. This Open Education 101 topic was really popular last year, so that's great. Um, culture of open, awesome. Great, I see that's moving a lot as the votes come in, so. Um, oh, and I guess I'll say a reminder as well. Um, this mentee 
you know, will stay open for the next 14 days. Um, so we will uh, post the links to this recording um, as well. You know, you'll still be able to access the mentee. So if, if you're watching this recorded um, later, just know that you are able to um, follow along and submit your answers as well. So as long as it's within the next 14 days um, of the community meeting. Okay, seeing some really great answers here. I'm gonna shuffle us along for the sake of time, but thank you so much. This is really, really valuable um, information for us. Um, okay, so next we have just like an open-ended um, topic question. We're wondering if there's other things that weren't necessarily um, you know, represented by those 10 topics um, that you would like to see at Open Ed 22. And if you can't think of something new, you know, if there's one that really resonates with you, feel free to pop that in here. Um, we're just curious to know sort of what's the most important to you. Okay, and the results roll in, that's awesome. A couple regarding software. Yeah, challenges around facilitating open ed, definitely multilingualism, excellent. Thanks folks. I'm gonna move us along, but still continue to, to pop those answers um, in uh, through the mentee. Okay, uh, so we'll have a couple questions about session types now. And at this point, I'm gonna hand it over to Susan to chat about session types. Thank you, Haley. Um, so again, uh, if you have, um, if you attended the conference last year, you're aware that there were um, you know, a variety of different session types. So as we look forward in our um, preparing the call for proposals, we want to get some input on um, what the value um, really in each of those different session types. So um, I'll just, I'll read these just in case anyone, um, you know, so folks, but you can also see them there on the, on the screen. Um, so we had 10 minute lightning talks. Those were pre-recorded. 25 minute presentations, which were also pre recorded, 40 minute live presentations, uh, 55 minute panel discussions, um, and 40 minute discussions that were uh, not recorded. Uh, those were um, just done live. And then we had a couple of open space, um, which were, which are like really open and people, um, you know, just, just had, uh, I think we had two of those last year. So um, we're going to do the same thing, um, give you the opportunity to rank uh, those session types by uh, the amount of value that they brought to the conference. All right, so as we watch those results roll in. Yeah, so the, I, the um, looks like the panel discussions and the, the longer, um, you know, the longer sessions, I think, you know, you can get a little bit more in depth with those. So it looks like people were appreciating those. Um, Great. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Um, and then just want to open it up. Are there other session types that you'd like to see? Mm. Yeah, maybe some more hands on things. A little, little more interactive, flip, flip classroom. I think what, what all, one of the pieces that was nice was that there were some designated times for watching some of the pre-recorded sessions and then engaging in discussion. Um, we did get some good feedback about that, that option. So you could just do it asynchronously or um, actually go to a room and be with other folks to watch something that was recorded and then discuss it. 
Okay, I see um, the unconference, uh, social spaces. That's a, that's a um, yeah, great suggestion, especially not being in person. Be, be great to have some, some spaces where people can just kind of socialize. And, and I think there was some of that last year um, as well. Uh, and there's been some talk about maybe even the possibility of doing some things like in person regionally. Um, nothing finalized at this point, but lots of ideas. So really appreciate the input he here. Um, this is the second time I've seen something about the business side. Um, so that's that's good feedback. Awesome. All right. Um, and then we have another kind of like a specific question about um, the possibility of a virtual poster session. Um, so curious about your thoughts about, uh, on that. Um, do you feel that would bring value to the conference and why or why not? Be helpful for us to know. Yeah, it is a tricky format virtually, agreed. Yep, great. All right, yes, yeah, so mix of opinions. Um, that's great. If they're, if they're available ahead of time and can be viewed afterwards. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So thanks again um, for all of that feedback. It's, it's super helpful for us as we're planning. Um, and then we have another kind of specific question. So as we were talking about um, the panel presentations and the types of um, proposals that we were getting for that time slot, we were wondering about, so the, our 55 minute uh, session type was purely um, inten intended for panels last year. And so this year we're wondering, well, should we have a 55 minute time slot that could be either a presentation or a panel? So the longest presentation time that we have right now is the 40 minute presentation. So curious about your, your thoughts here. And, um, you know, again, thinking about some of the the things folks said earlier about like workshops or hands-on types of sessions, wondering if if that might, if 55 minutes might be a, a, you know, a good thing to aim for there. Yeah, which somebody just said there, that it's too long for presentation unless interactivity is clearly built in. So that's a, that's a really good point. Yep. Yeah, so a workshop, but not lecture. Totally agree. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm gonna pass it back over to um, Tanja. Thank you, Susan. Uh, continuing on with the discussion, um, what do you what did you enjoy about the last two open conferences that you would like to see continue at this uh, open conference in 2022? And again, your feedback is so important because this conference is for all of us to continue to share knowledge with one another. The volunteering part, believe me, we have lots of work for you to do. So don't, don't worry about that one. Quality presenters, we will continue to to provide you with that networking opportunities, um, valuable presentations, most definitely. Evaluating proposals, variety of sessions. We hope that we be able to 
um, most definitely offer you a variety of sessions. I noticed that you, you really ask about a lot of hands-on activity workshops. So we most definitely will work on that one as well. Equity-centered, um, diversity. Okay. Our next question, what would you like to see change? We ask what you would like to see continue, but what would you like to see change for our Open 22 session? Well, we know it wasn't perfect guys, so, but we're working on it. Okay, more participants from the rest of the world. So we want out, some outside feedback because sometimes when you're in it, you don't see you know everything. So because you're so in it, so we need some outside feedback. Okay, uh, less East Coast time zone, more flexibility. Okay, um, more social opportunities more emphasis on real beginners. Okay, Mr. Roy, somebody's already letting you know that we're on your side. Uh, agree on time zone, Miss. Okay, we will most definitely look at the time zone. International collaboration, that's great. See if we can get with OEG Global or something like that, that's awesome. More follow-up, okay. More flexibility for, re of reviewing recorded sessions. Okay, so we just need more, a little bit more space. Okay, oh, time zone is really in. Okay, we really got to look at that time zone. Okay, well, great, this is awesome. And again, guys, you can always just go back and continue to add. The next question, what questions do you still have that you would like for us to address at our next meeting? Are there any questions that you feel that about the uh, conference that you would still like for us to address at the next meeting? Because I know this meeting, we told you that we're gonna have a date for you for a call proposal. We gave you the theme. Is there anything else that you would like an update on um, for our next meeting? Which will be- And just, sorry to interrupt, but maybe no. I'll just add for this question in particular. Um, you know, we know there are a lot of questions still and um, that's totally okay there's still you know many months before the conference for us to um, get to work on that and you know we'll we'll work our hardest to make sure that there is um, uh, lots finished for next week or next month I mean uh, at this meeting um, but do just keep in mind that uh, we may not have all the answers right now. Thank you Haley. Um, so some of your questions that you would like for us to address in the next meeting, and again, as Haley said, we will try to get to them and most definitely uh, try to have some information prepared for you. So evaluation um, criteria for the CFP, as um, Stephanie highlighted that for us today, uh, who does what? clear on governance and outreach. Most definitely, we are working on that. I'm, I'm saying my colleague Stephanie named quite a bit because she has a, a lot on her plate with, with the governance uh, paneling that she's doing. Uh, what are your plans for continuing to emphasize accessible conference? Okay. Uh, we will most definitely address uh, these questions and hopefully have some answers to you uh, for our next meeting long-term sustainability of the organization. Definitely. Bringing in disciplinary collaborations, opportunities for partnerships. Okay. Okay, so wrapping it up, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Susan. Yeah, um, so the first thing that um, we just want to say is that while we are still working to develop our committee structure, we um, are, I know a few, a few of you said one of the, one of your favorite things was, um, you know, doing things like reviewing proposals or having those volunteer opportunities. So 
that interest form is open. Um, and I think Haley just put it in the chat. So please feel free to express your interest in a volunteer role. And um, we should have information out soon about what those what that committee structure um, is going to look like. And then um, just a few reminders. Our next meeting is uh, May 13th from 1 to 2 Eastern. And um, we have these meetings are monthly. Um, so we have those scheduled through uh, through the end of the year. And then, of course, we want you to save the date if you haven't already for the conference, which will be held October 17th through the 20th of this year. And as we've already mentioned, it is going to be virtual. Uh, and finally, um, do follow us on social media. I think um, uh, Alex put the link to the Twitter in the chat, but there are we're also on Facebook on the gram and you can always use our official hashtag when you're posting. So Haley also put that um, link in the chat to sign up for the mailing list. All those links are in the chat there for you. And we just wanna say thank you so much, like super valuable to have your feedback. We're um, really excited. So many folks showed up today and um, look forward to more meetings and seeing you all at the conference. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. We'll see you next month.